Telco Edge services are now becoming a reality. But why is that happening now and who will benefit? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Caleb Anderson, Vice President of Portfolio and Engineering at Blue Planet, a division of Siena. So, Caleb, uh, edge services have become a very big topic for service providers during the past year or so. What's the reason for the growing interest in the edge? Yeah, so I think there's a few dimensions to this uh, this problem statement that you flag here, Ray. Uh, the first one is naturally uh, telecommunications companies have been on a journey of digitizing uh, their network and services so that they compete more effectively in the marketplace. The second dimension to this is, and this has been happening over a number of years, is that telcos have also been pushing out their core network as far out to the edge as possible so that they can deliver the next wave of services. And those next wave of services are really focused on delivering low latency type applications to the edge of the network. And that's really synonymous these days with 5G and being able to deliver those type of services, whether it's gaming, industrial IoT, or something else um, to end customers quickly and efficiently with the right SLA construct wrapped around it. And the edge is absolutely critical in doing that and having an intelligent edge that can deliver services in a robust, scalable way for customers. Um, and the real-time aspect of this is critical also, right? And we've seen, particularly over the last few years, this shift from um, static-based services to real-time on-demand services play out. And that's gonna happen even more as we move to the edge. Um, and we look at things like whether it's SD-WAN um, and being able to automate underlay and overlay networks in a real-time based model, or even things like 5G network slicing and needing to be able to create a dynamic slice over a very, very short period of time, say for a gaming tournament, as being a real application of these edge-based services delivered in a dynamic way that can be monetized uniquely to drive differentiation for the telco. So you mentioned automation. Uh, how does that relate to the evolution of edge services and what sort of problems does it solve for your customers? Yeah, so services automation plays a critical role in really driving the evolution of the edge. Uh, as I like to say, it's not an option, it's an absolute mandate. You can't roll out 5G or edge-based services without automation. It's just too complex, right? And the reason for that is when you look at the edge, what is it? It's a combination of applications sitting very, very far away from core data centers, sitting on compute infrastructure that needs to be able to dynamically shift and change and grow out elastically with the network basically plumbing all of this together. So you've got all these dynamic elements happening concurrently that need to be managed and delivered to the customer in near real time. Okay, manual processes, static based approaches to delivering OSS services delivery just don't work in an edge based model that is dynamic, is real time and is changing. So what does that mean for the telco? Essentially, it means that their existing way of delivering OSS based services does not work. Okay, and so what we're seeing a lot of the telcos do is build almost concurrent stacks that do away with the legacy that they've got that focus on delivering a next generation type of experience, a dynamic automation based model that leverages an AI based control plane to be able to deliver these next generation services with the right SLA construct wrapped around it. Okay. It's happening today. We're seeing telcos absolutely shift from the legacy and move to these next generation based automation models because they understand the dynamic nature of edge and 5G requires a different way of doing things. Service providers play a big role in edge services, but who else is involved? Yeah, so when you actually look at what is required to deliver an edge based service, I think the key thing to realize is it's going to be an ecosystem approach while service providers are gonna play a key role, right? They're ultimately on the hook to deliver the service the way the customer wants. They're not gonna be able to deliver these next generation services uh, alone by themselves. So who other ecosystem players that are gonna wrap around this? Firstly, the cloud providers, right? The Azures, the Amazons, the Microsofts, the Googles of the world, um, they're gonna be absolutely critical in enabling the telcos to deliver an intelligent edge. Right? The telcos aren't gonna be able to build out the edge by themselves out to all the locations they need. They're gonna to need to leverage the hyperscalers and the role that the hyperscalers will play in delivering the infrastructure and then also enabling that infrastructure through the cloud elasticity and the cloud portability that they have. 
So you will see this natural relationship between telco and hyperscaler, I believe, play out to deliver an intelligent edge. The second part of the ecosystem is the application developers, right? Everyone wants to deliver intelligent applications on the edge of the network. So whether it's an application for gaming or industrial IoT, that application is going to need to be tuned to be able to deliver services on the edge of the network. What does that mean? It means the application also needs to scale elastically. It needs that it also needs to be portable. So it may need to move from one edge to another edge to deliver services based on different SLAs. So you're going to see naturally this ecosystem of cloud providers, application developers, telcos, as well as OSS providers wrap around that to be able to stitch um, this, this ecosystem together and be able to deliver it in a real time manner. When you're working with service providers, what are some of the things that they look for in an automation software solution? So I think the first thing to realize is the legacy way of delivering OSS and automation is not the right way for the future, right? Um, a lot of those systems are monolithic, closed, and essentially not products, but services that are customized to deliver a unique experience for a telco, but it can't be leveraged broadly, right? They get stranded on an island. So the first thing is to deliver a next generation automations experience for, for, for edge and cloud, you need to sort of break the old paradigm. So what are some of the new attributes you really need to think of? First of all, it needs to be product centric, right? The, 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 the telcos want product delivered and uh, have a consistent experience that they can, they can manage moving forward rather than a customized bespoke solution that creates complexity from a supportability perspective. The second thing is they want openness and programmability. They don't want to be beholden to a vendor for every change that gets made to their application and be uh, reliant on timelines that don't align to them. The openness and programmability in SDKs are absolutely critical in delivering that next generation experience because you're essentially given the keys to the castle, to the telco or their partner of choice to be able to build on top of and leverage the platform in ways that they want to, they want to take to market themselves. The third dimension is it needs to be delivery agnostic, right? The world is moving away from on-prem based business models. So um, the, the, the automation solution needs to be able to support cloud-based delivery models itself. It should be deployable in the public cloud. It should be deliverable as a SaaS also. So you're providing that flexibility in terms of how the telco wants to actually consume the technology. Um, and ultimately it needs to be extensible, right? Um, uh, telcos don't want to choose an automation solution just for a particular domain. Okay, they don't want to buy a solution to support IoT and then another one to support edge and then another one to support network. The automation solution should be extensible, operating the services management layer, and that it can work cross domain across multi vendor based environments also so that they can get economies of scale and efficiency from that overall automation solution. You've talked about how Edge, Cloud and 5G will enable thousands of services. Uh, both of these are expected to span numerous technologies and domains such as Edge and transport networks, virtualization and more. But can a single automation software solution handle all of these services and all of these domains? So as you said, Ray, the reality is when you start looking at Edge as a technology, it brings in such a broad range of technology. Right, so you're talking about potentially RAN, 5G, infrastructure, you're talking about microservices, compute, and then you've got to bring the whole OSS piece around that in terms of how you deal with it from a BSS perspective, as well as a service management down to the respective domains. Lots of complexity, all shifting around in real time. So the reality is, can a single uh, automations vendor deliver all of this? I don't think so. I think it's naturally going to be an ecosystem-based approach and the ecosystem partners that are successful in this edge world are really gonna to need to work together and ensure that they're complying to a standards and open-based approach that allows their various systems to integrate together. So what does that mean? Okay, so first thing it means um, having the right APIs and programmability so that the systems can communicate bi-directionally. We see in this industry, things like the embracing of TM forum-based standards from an OSS perspective. Um, MEF and MANO based standards as it relates to virtualization, as well as 3GPP based standards as it relates to 5G. 
ensuring that the ecosystem partners are embracing these standards, embracing consistent data models so that everyone can play their part in delivering across this broader ecosystem is absolutely critical. Do I think there'll be a one throat to choke uh, based model in which one vendor can do everything? I don't think so. I think with the breadth of technology that needs to be supported at the application, at the infrastructure and networking layer, there's just too many, too much complexity and too many moving parts to make it happen. It's clear that Blue Planet is working with an increasing number of service providers. So exactly how well is Blue Planet doing? We're doing really well at Blue Planet, so we continue to grow and acquire new customers as well as see our existing customers um, grow and expand their Blue Planet footprint also. And we've just recently reached a, a significant milestone of over 200 uh, Blue Planet customers globally. And that spans across large tier one customers down to tier two, tier three, cable MSOs, wireless carriers, um, uh, as well as uh, uh, cloud vendors also. So what are some of the most recent use cases um, and, and customers that have come on a Blue Planet journey? Well, the first one I would really reference is British Telecom, uh, where British Telecom has used Blue Planet to roll out their Digico based offer, which is a business services offer really focused on cloud based collaboration uh, based environments, essentially using Blue Planet to automate things like Zoom and Teams uh, in a near real time manner. They've also taken one step further and looked to leverage Blue Planet as a services orchestration layer that spans across all their services domains. Compare and contrast that to someone like a Telefonica that is leveraging Blue Planet for service order management and services orchestration to support their next generation multi-vendor optical network and really use automation as a foundation for delivering uh, a 5G network slicing. Look at someone like Dish that's leveraging us um, to deliver their next generation 5G wireless services where they're going on a fully virtualized 5G core uh, based journey and are looking to use Blue Planet at that services inventory layer as well as service order management layer for their 5G services. Someone like a Mobile One, probably not the, 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 the most well known, uh, a Singapore based uh, telco uh, delivering 5G based services, leveraging Blue Planet to do the eSIM activations and subscriber activations um, as they onboard new 5G subscribers. So the key point here is a very broad range of use cases spanning wireline, wireless, edge, cloud, uh, as well as IoT is sort of the world that we play in these days inside of Blue Planet. And from my perspective, it's great to be working with some of the most innovative telcos out there that are looking to drive a digital transformation and use automation and it's specifically intelligent automation as the enabler of that journey for them. So good times here at Blue Planet. Well, that's a really impressive list of customers, Calum. Thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on Blue Planet and the importance of edge services. Mm -hmm.